Okay guys, this will be part one, uh, and I don't know how many parts, uh, doing a quick overview of using a lathe, or in this case a mini lathe, uh, for hobby and uh, model making work. Now this was a uh, idea for this video series, uh, really got uh, pushed over the top by uh, Colin Arthurs on the Scale Modelers Critique Group, uh, asking about... Uh, those are the, the members there that have a lathe, uh, how often they use it, how useful, and etc. Uh, they have found it. So I've been meaning to, to do this and really uh, to type out a whole response. Uh, would have taken too long, so I told them I was going to do a video. Now I have uh, this particular uh, lathe, which is Grizzly's uh, 7 by 12 mini metal lathe. It is model number. G8688. Uh, I've looked at a lot of different mini lays uh, over uh, quite a long period before I finally settled on this one. And we'll get to more on why I settled on this one uh, later. But important things to consider when you are looking for a mini lathe uh, to use uh, for really anything. And the two main measurements, 7 by 12, uh, you have uh, 12, which is the distance between uh, your centers, uh, your tailstock, and the headpiece. You need uh, to make sure that you're getting one that is long enough or wide enough uh, to accommodate uh, whatever it is that you plan to be working on. Now, there are smaller lathes that even Grizzly offers. I think they have a, a 4 inch by 6 inch. Now, the other measurement is the swing over bed of how wide you can have a workpiece uh, before it starts to uh, interfere with uh, the bed right here. In this case, uh, 7 inches by 12 inches. Grizzly also makes a 7 by 14. Uh, then they go up to, I think, 8 by 16 and so on. Uh, you may be thinking, looking at this, that looks this looks a lot like, except for the green finish, uh, like the central machinery uh, lathe that uh, ha Harbor Freight sells, or even the Microlux lathe that Micromark sells. And there are a few others, but we'll get to that again in a minute. So those are the uh, important factors when deciding what size of a lathe you need, is how long of a piece of material do you usually or do you plan on typically working with? Now, uh, for me, for model making, generally speaking, the idea when I got this was to turn my own uh, pieces or own gun barrels for armor kits that I have, uh, which you really don't need a lot of space for that. But some German armor, if you're going to do that, you're looking at barrel lengths in 135th scale that are at 6 inches or longer, which means uh, you can't really do it on a 4x6 lathe because you're really exceeding uh, how much space you really have to work with. Because generally uh, the majority of work you're going to do on the lathe is really from about uh, the tail or from the headstock to about 3 quarters of the bed. You usually aren't going to be doing turning a whole piece on a metal lathe. Now a wood turning lathe is different. Now a wood turning lathe uh, does not uh, really work for model making unless you are only planning to turn wood or styrene. You can turn styrene on a wood lathe uh, as well as this lathe. This lathe does go down, uh, spin far enough to you don't have a problem trying to work a styrene. Uh, but of course you can't really do metal on a wood lathe and a wood lathe isn't as precise as a metal lathe. Uh, the other important factor is the spindle bore, is how thick of a material can you fit uh, through uh, the headstock of the machine to work on. Uh, in this particular case it is somewhere around 0.78 of an inch, uh, which is fine for the majority of time. Uh, I have, uh, in fact uh, my pointing stick right now is a quarter inch piece of uh, brass. I also turn aluminum often. Uh, those are the two majority of things. I turn aluminum and brass and uh, 0.68 of an inch 
is fine for of course quarter inch and then some of the half inch stock that I have and of course uh, it all depends on what you are trying to use but those are the important factors really uh, distance between centers and the swing over bed and the spindle bore now there are other things to consider uh, when you're looking at a uh, mini lathe uh, if it has a uh, automated carriage feed and if you can switch directions easily uh, this of course does have an automated carriage feed uh, it is reversible uh, but to reverse it you do have to, or at least I do, turn off the machine. Uh, same with uh, the motor or that it has. Uh, it does have a forward and reverse switch here which is kind of hard to see again. Uh, you have to turn the machine off before you change it. It has a high and low range. Again you need to turn the machine off uh, this particular one before you change it. Uh, and the low range goes from 0 to 11 100 RPM, the high uh, from about 0 to 2500. Uh, I typically leave it on the low range uh, and turn it up uh, max on low, which is 1100 RPM, which is what I usually turn aluminum and brass at. Of course, steel and other things, you can uh, bump it up or slow it down. Uh, this one, of course, also has a threading chart. Uh, you can cut threads with this particular lathe and most mini lathes that have an automated carriage feed. Now, of course, the controls for high-low range and the reversing of the carriage feed are all done uh, behind here. One other consideration to make is the type of motor uh, that you need and uh, the type of gears that it uses. In this particular case, this is a three-quarter ho horse 110 volt motor and it uses plastic gears. Now, some people have a problem with that. Uh, I do not understand why. Uh, this, of course, goes back to my old RC days uh, with uh, nitro engine cars. You always usually typically find plastic gears uh, because if you want, or if you're going to have a failure point on a piece of equipment, uh, it's better to have it on a small gear that is easier, easily replaced than a more intricate internal mechanism. Also, uh, the Grizzly lathe comes with another full set of replacement gears and a few other uh, accessories which I'm not going to pull out. Uh, one thing to note if you're going to go down this route, uh, shipping is expensive, right? Currently on Grizzly's website, this particular lathe costs $515. Shipping is $80 or $90 and it, it's uh, freighted directly to uh, wherever you want it. It's not going to come UPS or post office. It's going to come on the back of a truck. Now to pick up a semi or a 18 wheel or whatever you want to call it, even though it's not that big of a trailer. So you have to make sure that wherever you're having it delivered, the truck can have access to. Beyond that, you need to make sure that you can get it and pick it up and move it. Uh, you may need help, you may not. This a particular lathe, I think shipping weight was 90 pounds. The lathe itself, I think only weighs something like uh, 50 or 60 pounds because the bed, of course, is cast iron. So those are the considerations that you really have to make uh, when you're looking at a lathe.